What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this finally Friday, September 8th, 2023. It's about 1035 a.m. here, California time. A lot of earthquake activity happening overnight, including a, a large earthquake down here in the quiet zone. Kermadec Trench has been awfully quiet compared to movement up here. This has been slowly working its way down towards the New Zealand area, so continue to watch that. We'll check New Zealand here in just a minute. But we are noticing a little uptick in activity out here across the eastern Pacific Plate, including some movement here just into the Mexico area where we've seen a 5.8 in the last hour. Also, a 5.6, roughly uh, within about, uh, well, this was a little bit earlier, about two hours of each other. So definitely seeing some adjustment going on out here across the uh, eastern Pacific areas. Also up here outside of the, uh, uh, let's see, Bernie area, 5.0 coming in here within the last 10 minutes. Now, this is a little odd earthquake. That did show up here uh, on the Dinsmore Station and also uh, what looks like the Mount St. Helens Station up in Washington. So uh, sometimes these five-pointers can definitely kick up slightly. I did not feel it. I was just out in my car coming back home. Otherwise, I probably would have felt it and seen my earthquake rock up here move. I do have an earthquake rock, which is basically a crystal tied up to a long piece of string hanging from the ceiling. And I have seen that thing rock back and forth a few times when there's been earthquakes nearby. So, yeah, 5.0 near the Bernie area. I'm sure these guys felt it pretty strongly. It looks like it was about 14 kilometers deep or so. Uh, getting felt reports outside of Reading. Um, I'm sure these will fill in slightly throughout the morning. Like I say, this just came in within the last couple minutes. Uh, within the last 10 minutes, it looks like. Uh, historical data. Well, we have had some activity up here into the Chester area recently underneath Lake Almanor. We have a little bit of swarming out here in the past few months. Uh, but far as this specific area around the Rocky Ledge Fault, looks like there's a couple different uh, fracture zones up here uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any uh, activity up here in this region but uh, I'd say overall Northern California has been above background levels out here uh, yesterday we've seen a little swarm of activity across the Sacramento Valley stretching up towards the Cascadia uh, so I believe pressure is building out here across the Cascadia subduction zone one earthquake also near Willows. Uh, this is around the Sacramento River, it looks like. Not for sure if this has been reviewed yet or not. This could be potentially just a phantom false earthquake from this five-pointer, uh, which I believe the five-pointer has been reviewed. Let me double check that and see uh, the status on it. It has been reviewed by a seismologist, so that 5.0 will stick. Let us know if you felt it out there. Um, outside of Bernie by a, just a couple miles here. There's a lot of old ancient volcanic domes out here in this area. Uh, but at that depth right there, 14 kilometers deep, I don't think that's uh, going to be associated with volcanic. Uh, Mount Lassen sits down here. But uh, goodness, that definitely showed up pretty nicely on these... Uh, <laughs> let's see how many windows I can open here. On these seismograph stations here. Look at that. It's pretty impressive to say the least. Um, again, the main signature showed up here around Dinsmore. Again, Mount St. Helens picked it up, though. That's a little odd for it to be picking that up. Uh, Parkfield, that's a little bit further south of here. And uh, even down Southern California, looks like they may have picked up a little bit of the P wave activity. So that's, uh, you know, quite impressive. Looks like another a uh, little bit of aftershock activity here occurring with a 2.3. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this. I'm not for sure the last time we've seen any large scale movement. Uh, take place up here in Northern California. Uh, let's see historical data. Doesn't really show a whole lot. There's looks like there's really hasn't been anything above 4.5. And this is the uh, legend over here, 4.5 and above. Zip zero around this epicenter, uh, one way up here. So this is a little odd. Uh, we'll have to check out what this fault system is, Rocky Ledge Fault. Uh, we'll do a little bit more investigation in that later tonight. Um, I do have a busy, busy day, even though it's Friday, I got a super busy day. So I'm just going to, uh, cut through this, uh, New Zealand, of course, down here in the watch zone due to the heightened activity up North along the Kermadec trench. That's a somewhat of a shallow earthquake here. 
6.6 early in the morning hours. I think I was awake. It was one of those nights where I just couldn't sleep. But, um, yeah, I didn't get around to doing the update on this one. But that was a pretty good-sized earthquake down here across the Kerbadak Trench. Uh, following this activity, it looks like we've had some deeper adjustment taking place here across the Fiji area. Uh, we'll continue to watch that. The GeoNet server is here. Let me double-check the main, the main areas here. Uh, earthquake bring up all magnitudes uh let's see 3.3 kermadec trench there's a 3.7 about 19 minutes ago here um just in between the north and south island another 3.7 kermadec trench area so we'll definitely watch this area uh for some potential movement there's the uh, goodness. Look at that. Woo. That's a 6.6 .6 showing up there on that graph. That's what a big one looks like. And uh, it's interesting to watch these models here, at least these graphs. It gives you a good indicator of the properly tuned ones out here. Similar to Yellowstone, right? Some stations will be amplified to just pick up very strong signatures locally where these even, even, uh, Smaller earthquakes may not show up here across this Milford Sound Station because the amplitudes are turned down. Uh, but these stations up here look like they are properly tuned. Either way, I think there was like two earthquakes here, right? I see what looks like two signatures of an earthquake. Um, even on this one. That one they're picking up two as well. That's what we look for when there's two. So, uh, but... I'm only seeing one 6.6. .6. This is an older earthquake here, so <clears throat> possible. Could have seen another one in the shadow of that first earthquake. Uh, goodness. Either way, heads up New Zealand. Stay on guard out there. Western Pacific. Um, latest activity, a 4.6 down here across the, or up here across the East China Sea. Seen a couple earthquakes up here in the last 24 hours. Uh, looks like we're about ready to get some good movement out here across the West Coast. So Southern California right now, somewhat quiet. Uh, we did have some activity at 3.1. Late last night uh, on the uh, Elsinore Fault, this has been a pretty quiet fault here recently. It looks like that may start to show some activity as well. A little jumbled up mix here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. That's always of a concern if that turns into any type of swarming. Uh, so we'll continue to keep an eye here on the West Coast with this movement going on here. Got to, uh, looks like maybe a good, decent swarm going to start kicking up here following this uh, activity. Let me uh, real quick double check the historical data here on the USGS map. I want to check out 4.5 and above since time began. Well, I'm just going to use the year 1000. Doesn't mean that it's going to be that long ago that the records are kept. Obviously not. But I uh, want to see what's going on out here as far as uh, data goes. There's Bernie out here. I just want to check specifically. Yeah, right. We know Mount Laskin can have some earthquakes. It's, that's a given. But specifically right around this Bernie area, Northern California. I want to see what's out here real quick. And, uh, well, <clears throat> looks like back in 1978, there was one up here. This, this looks like some type of old lava dome. Pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, and then before that, 1974, this is quite a few lava uh, areas as well, about five kilometers deep. And then um, one way down here back in 1930, a 4.5. So it's, I don't really see anything associated though with this rocky ledge fault. So we're going to have to look into that and see uh, what kind of magnitudes these things are capable of. A lot of these Older fault systems here have not shown any movement in a while, but they still accumulate stress over time. So it may have been a couple thousand years ago since the last big earthquake on here. We may just be living in that time where we see one. I don't know. Either way, just keep uh, keep your uh, guard up today across the West Coast. It does look like it's starting to light up here uh, across California and the Eastern Pacific in general. We did see some movement here just off the coast of Mexico with that 5.8 just about an hour or so ago. Space weather activity, jumping into that, uh, fairly calm over the last 24 hours, not a whole lot of activity stirring up. We do have a couple sunspots here that we are currently watching. 
This region here, 3423 to 3425, is an area of interest. This looks like it is growing slightly. Uh, but we'll watch for the uh, magnetic structure complexity. Right now, uh, it's moderate, but uh, we'll continue to watch that maybe for some development. Right now, 95% chance for a C flare, M flare, 25% chance, 5% for the X flare. No major, no major auroras in the forecast. Real quick glance at space weather or uh, storm prediction center. Slight category out here in eastern Texas and a little bit across the eastern portion of the states as well. Not a whole lot of tornado potential. Most of this is going to be some wind events from the straight line winds from these thunderstorms. So just a heads up on that if you're out there in that area. A uh, real quick glance here at Hurricane Lee. Let's show you guys Hurricane Lee. Goodness, this thing is just kicking up. I'm going to go to the National Hurricane Center and get the uh, most recent info here. We're looking at winds of uh what's our winds right now 155 miles per hour goodness strong category five hurricane kicking up here it is moving off towards the west northwest at 13 miles per hour continuing to track towards the bahamas but i don't think it's gonna kick up that way uh let's look at the uh, latest numerical model here need to bring up the eastern or the uh North Atlantic area right here. Here's Hurricane Lee spinning out there with nothing in its way. Uh, latest model here still shows a westward track, but then notice that the uh, the the models here, the guidance model, shows that this thing's going to get sucked up there. But uh, again, it's something to watch. Look at that low pressure system pulling across the east coast. That's going to prevent this from heading that way. Uh, so that should be sucked up to the north with that low pressure. And that's kind of looks like what's going to happen there. But we're continuing to watch that. It does look like it wants to clip areas up here in the extreme northeast. Uh, of course, we'll report back on that. It's getting, uh, it's getting a couple days off. This turning point right here, roughly on Tuesday and the Wednesday, is going to be an extremely important day to watch for Hurricane Lee. All right, folks, have a good one. Uh, let us know if you felt that earthquake out here in Northern California. Unfortunately, I did not. I probably would have had I not been moving out here in a motor vehicle. But uh, keep an eye on it. I'm getting a little swarm of activity out there. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. And happy Friday.